Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another devlog for Dauphin, my 2D RPG about a marine biologist trying to save the ocean and its inhabitants. Today is Monday, just got back from a weekend out of town visiting family, and before that, a week of kinda just recharging. I worked a bit on Dauphin, fixing a few defects and making some new progress that I'll show you in a minute, but I mostly just relaxed ahead of a busy weekend of travel, and maybe finished up Dark Souls 3 to get me warmed up for Elden Ring in a few days. After that break, I'm feeling great heading into this new week and excited to pick up where we left off, adding some new life to Dauphin's underwater scenes. That one bit of new progress I did make last week dealt with how I'm actually placing those organisms underwater. At the end of the last devlog, I had just created kind of a sea vine and a piece of coral that I hand placed in the particular scene that's used to programmatically generate the seafloor. That worked pretty well, but I'd love for the placement of those organisms to also be programmatic so that the player sees something a bit different each time they explore a similar underwater area. To achieve this, I've repurposed my trash spawner node, which was used to randomly distribute trash across an island, to now be an entity spawner. So it's really just more flexible taking in entities to spawn as a dependency via an export array and allowing me to define the spawn area by manipulating a 2D collision shape. That worked great. It still spawns trash on the island as it used to, and now I have a spawner on that ocean floor scene with my two underwater organisms plugged into that export array. When I dive down now, the spawner randomly chooses between the entities I want to spawn and places them at a random position within the bounds of that collision shape. Without working, there's one final to do for this task, which is to allow the player to swim in front of some of these organisms and behind others, especially for tall things like the sea vine. I reckon there's more than one way to achieve this. I don't think Y sort nodes will be appropriate given the kind of side on perspective shift when we're underwater, but I think I could either modify Z indices or create a new layer for the scene for foreground objects. The plan for now is to dive in and figure out what works best. Should have this wrapped up quick, so we will catch up soon. Hey everyone, fast forward to Tuesday morning. Unsurprisingly, that task took a bit longer than expected, but after some trial and error, I think I have a good solution. So we'll go ahead and take a quick look. We'll start here in my underwater procedural scene, which is basically the entry point to the diving system. You can see over here on the left that we have a number of layers in which we draw chunks to actually procedurally create that underwater area that the player can explore. The particular layer that the player is placed in is called the focus layer, and because it's below all these other layers, the player is in the very front, meaning that in the current state, he kind of just swims in front of all the flora and fauna that I happen to spawn in on the ocean floor layer. My first attempt at a solution to have some flora that the player could swim behind was to create a new layer here in front of the focus layer, meaning that anything I placed in that layer would render basically in front of the player. And from that rendering perspective, that actually worked pretty well. The problem is, in this particular case, I want to be spawning organisms that are anchored to the ocean floor. When I had this new layer in front of the player that was completely empty, it is completely separate from that ocean floor layer, so I really have no notion of where the ocean floor is. That made it a bit more tricky than I liked to try and accurately place those objects, so I moved on to a different solution. My other option was to continue using the same entity spawner that I have in place in my ocean floor chunk. This way I can still kind of see where I'm spawning things in relation to the sprite that represents the ocean floor. If we go ahead and jump into my entity spawner, you can see a change that I've made to help support this. Because we're now working in the same layer, we have to still figure out a way to create the effect of rendering some of these entities in front of or behind the player. To do this, I've created a new custom export value called custom Z index. When this custom Z index is set, we end up setting the Z index of the entity that spawned and that allows us to individually place some in front of or behind the player based on how we have this configured for the entity spawner. To accompany this change, we now have three different entity spawners as children of my ocean floor chunk. We have an entity spawner background, which is here towards the top of the ocean floor and has a custom Z index of negative one. We then have our original entity spawner in the middle, which has a custom Z index of zero, and then one towards the bottom of the scene, which has a Z index of one. The result of all this is a pretty cool effect. When the player is swimming towards the ocean floor and encounters an object spawn towards the back of the ocean floor, they will appear in front of it. And similarly, when they encounter an object towards the front of the ocean floor, they will swim behind it. And when these kind of sea vines are placed pretty densely, you encounter some cool effects like the player swimming between them based on how they're laid out. So I think overall this turned out great. 
With that wrapped up, I'm looking at my development board for the rest of the week. I think my ultimate goal for the week is to create a new swimming organism, basically something that's not anchored to the ocean floor like the coral or the sea vine. Specifically, I think it'd be nice to create a jellyfish, the jellyfish that I had back in my underwater concept art, kind of round out the overall implementation of that concept, which I think would be really cool. In the meantime, I do have some tweaks and enhancements and one defect that I did not clear out before the devlog. Before I get to this new feature work, I think it'd be good to knock these out. None of these should be too difficult, but of all these, the one I'm most excited for is starting out organisms with a random percentage of corruption based on whatever their max corruption can be. Right now, there are only a few organisms that start as corrupted, and those are the sand crabs, but it makes sense to me that there would potentially be a starting corruption value that's not zero for basically every organism that we spawn into the game. Right off the bat, this will have a huge effect on the aesthetic of Dauphin as you will spawn into a world that has way more corruption than we're used to seeing so far, so I'm looking forward to making this change. I unfortunately don't have too much more time before work this morning. I'll go ahead and get a head start, but we will probably catch up at some point this evening. While I'm working on that, it's time to meet the shrimp sponsored by my most recent Patreon supporters, Anita, Thin Matrix, Hats, and Sarah. I'm super grateful for y'all's support of the channel and for everyone who's sponsored a shrimp. I've introduced nearly 20 to the new tank now, and just as I've hoped, they have started to breed. We're on our way to having a very active and vibrant tank, and that is thanks to all of you, so thank you. Hey everyone, quick update here on Wednesday morning. Looking at the development board, you can see in my complete column, we have knocked out a lot of bugs and a lot of enhancements last night and this morning. So things are feeling a lot better from a tech debt perspective and we're ready to move on to feature work. But before I do that, I wanna show you some highlights of some of the stuff I cleaned up. Right off the bat, when we spawn into the world, you'll see that there is a lot more corruption than we are normally used to seeing. And that's due to my change to create a random initial corruption value for every organism. So basically how this works is each organism has a maximum potential corruption, which is different between organisms. So like the tree right here might have a higher maximum corruption value than the little sand crab, for instance. And what this change does is randomly select a value between zero and 100% of that maximum value and apply it to the organism. So this is just a fresh spawn in of the player. And you'll see that some of these trees are not very corrupted at all, like this one right here. Still mostly green with a few particles floating up, and some of these up here are far more corrupted, close to 100%. You can see in our diving scene here that this change also takes place underwater. So now we have a lot of corruption of varying levels between all of our organisms that we've programmatically spawned in. And while I'm down here, I want to talk a bit about the entity spawner. I made another change to just add a little more control to how I'm randomly spawning entities in the game. Instead of having just an array of entities that can be selected at random to spawn in for a given spawner, I now have a dictionary of entities which has the key of the entity itself and the value of an associated weight, meaning that for a given spawner, I can assign weights to all of these organisms that I want to spawn in in case I want some organisms to be rarer than others. I think these are some very positive changes and I'm glad to have these in place before moving on to feature work. Next up is creating my first swimming organism. I think once I have that, I'll have a pretty good vertical slice of the overall underwater scene to kind of move past that milestone. It's also something I just really wanna do. So we'll jump in soon. For now, off to work, so I will see y'all in a bit. Hey everyone, quick update here on Thursday morning as I finally had a chance to start on our new jellyfish organism. You can see him here in progress in the engine. Spent some time in A-Sprite this morning trying to figure out how to animate that static image that I had from my concept art. I give this a four out of 10, but it's something I'll be able to go back and iterate on in the future. What matters is that I have some animation, he's here in the engine, and I'm ready to start designing his states. My idea for now is to not have the jellyfish pursue the player as the sand crab does, but instead just kind of float aimlessly around in the water as they seem to do in real life. If the player gets too close, I want to have the jellyfish emit some kind of circular kind of area of effect attack that would apply corruption to the player. 
I am once again out of time before work this morning, but I'm hoping I can wrap up this behavior before the weekend and the release of this devlog. We'll catch up soon. Hey everyone, welcome back to Saturday Morning for the final update of the devlog. Since we last spoke, I've been hard at work building the jellyfish organism and I'm really excited with how it turned out. So here's our little jellyfish. You can see over here in the hierarchy how he is architected and really it starts out with him being an inherited class of that organism base class that I worked on in the previous devlog. So from that organism base class, he gets his collision shape, his sprite, his kind of base corruption, and a loot table. Everything that I've added on top of that here is displayed as kind of white text instead of grayed out. So we have some new sprites for his attacks. We have a state machine with an idle state and an attack state, some stuff to help with his animations, and then a detection circle to help him detect the player. In order to spawn some of these guys underwater, I'm using much the same process as I do for the sea vines and the coral. Instead of spawning these guys on the ocean floor, I actually want them to be part of the focus layer, which is where the player spawns in. So if we look at the individual chunk that I use currently to populate the focus layer, we now have a new entity spawner that kind of covers up that entire chunk there, and it's got one entity that it can spawn, which is the jellyfish. All this comes together in our underwater scene where you can now see we have a bunch of really cool jellyfish just kind of gliding around. And what you're seeing here is their idle state where they kind of pull their tentacles up, push them down, and when they push them down, they get a boost of speed forward in the direction that they're pointing. And you'll also notice that the direction they're facing kind of changes over time as they slowly rotate. So these guys will ultimately end up heading in a bunch of different directions as they spend more time in the scene. My favorite interaction with this organism happens when you get too close to the jellyfish, when you enter that detection circle that I just pointed out. At that point, we will trigger the jellyfish's attack state, at which point it will implement a small area of effect attack that actually does quite a bit of corruption damage to the player. So we'll go ahead and try to trigger that here. We'll get close, we'll see a kind of red circle expand out to let the player know that they are about to be hit with an attack. And then we see some kind of tendrils shoot out from the jellyfish and apply quite a bit of corruption to the player. And I have to say, I just really love this effect. Let me know what you think of this guy down in the comments. I'm personally very encouraged by how quickly I was able to both create this new organism and implement a pretty cool attack, in part thanks to how componentized the corruption system is. With that wrapped up, I think it's time to start putting together this video for release tomorrow. As always, I want to give a huge thanks to all the folks supporting this channel and Dolphin's development on Patreon, with a special shout out to my Garami and Beta supporters. Garami supporters this month are Cody Odin, Finnickfu Games, Mega Ombre, James Kennedy, Jess Sargo, Binary Chef, and Elena. And Beta supporters are Happy Hippie, Deluse, Vlad Sunny, and Avant. Now that I have both static and dynamic organisms above and below the surface, it's time to shift focus to one of the most important and challenging tasks so far in Dauphin's development, the combat system. That's where we're headed in the next devlog, so I hope you'll stay tuned. In the meantime, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.